Hello everyone, welcome back. In this episode, we will explore the case of Marvin Patterson, a man at the center of a triple murder that happened at the Centennial Hills apartment complex in December 2023. Please like and subscribe to our channel for more real life stories. According to court documents, 42-year-old Marvin Patterson was facing several felony sex crimes. Everyone is wondering why he wasn't kept in jail. They blamed the prosecutor and the judge. The fact is Marvin's bail was reduced by a judge, Diana Sullivan, because the defense lawyer claimed Marvin Patterson was not a threat and would be under house arrest. In addition, Mr. Patterson's brother, son, ex-girlfriend, and wife testified that he was a good man in order to get his bail reduced. Police say 42-year-old Marvin Patterson killed himself and three others, including his 34-year-old wife, Shannara Patterson, his 14-year-old stepdaughter, Keziah Cohn, and his six-year-old daughter, Zamira Patterson. He also shot his 11-year-old stepson, Derek, who survived. The coroner's office said the deceased victims and surviving victim were all shot in the head. Court documents reveal Patterson was facing several felony charges in Clark County, including sexual assault against a child under 16 and lewdness with a child under 14. He was scheduled to go to trial next April. Last October, Patterson's bail was set at $100,000 for the charges he was facing. But just two months later in December, a Clark County judge lowered his bail to only $10,000. Agreeing with his defense team, Patterson would not skip bail and needed to help support his family. Patterson then posted bond and was placed on house arrest. Former Clark County District Attorney David Roger believes more should have been done to keep Patterson in custody, given the severity of the crimes he was accused of. I think that the court system failed. I think that the prosecutors could have done more uh, under these circumstances. I, I think that the guardian or whoever brought those children over to the defendant's home uh, failed these, these children as well. Metro police confirmed Patterson was under house arrest at the apartment where the shooting occurred. A former attorney for Patterson said in a statement that while Patterson's wife and children live separately, he believes she brought them to his home because she had been evicted from hers. Here is my take on this case. Marvin Patterson was a serial sexual predator who preyed on underage girls that were in his presence. His lawyer knew it, his brother Jason knew it, and his wife Shannar knew it. He was accused of many lewd conducts by multiple underage girls over the course of many years. Yet his lawyer was advocating for him to be released on bail. His brother testified he was a good man even after seeing all the charges, and his wife, who he eventually murdered, also testified that he was a good man, knowing that she had two underage girl kids to protect from this monster. Ultimately, the bulk of the blame falls on the murderer, Marvin Patterson. But his wife is second in line for allowing this monster around her kids and for taking the kids to live with him while he was under house arrest. She put her kids in a situation where they would end up losing their lives at such a young age. This story is as tragic as there would ever be, but the sad part is that the man who caused all this carnage was already locked up until he was released to cause all this destruction and pain. Thank you for watching and let me know what you think of this case in the comments. Please like and subscribe to our channel as we bring real life stories to you every week. Now stay tuned for additional commentary by DJ. Hey everyone, DJ here. And I want to share my thoughts on this case because I've been looking at true crime cases for the past 25 years. And this case is one of the worst I've ever come across. Marvin Patterson is a monster, worse than a monster. This guy decided to kill his whole family just so he won't have to go to jail. Marvin Patterson is one sick individual. He has been molesting kids since 2013 until he got arrested in 2022. So when he was arrested, Marvin was charged with nine felony counts of sexual assaults on minors. So he was charged with five counts of lewd acts with a child under the age of 14, two counts of sexual assault on a minor under the age of 16, one count of lewd conduct with a child under the age of 16, and one count of first degree kidnapping of a minor. This guy's a pedophile and a sickle. Marvin is married to Sonara, and he has one child with her. And she also has two kids that she had before she met him. And he has two other kids that he had with another woman before he met Sonara. So Sonara has three kids, two girls and a boy. One girl is 14, 
the other girl, which is Marvin's biological child, she's six, and she also has an 11 year old son called Derek. When Marvin was arrested, he claimed that he was innocent. His bail was set at $100,000, and Marvin was unable to pay that amount. His lawyer decided to help him get his bail lowered so he can be released. The lawyer went to the judge and told them that and the case is weak and he also brought in four witnesses to testify on the character of Marvin. You won't believe those witnesses were Jason, his brother, his ex-girlfriend, his son and his current wife. So I have a brother and if my brother called me and he said, can you come and testify as a character witness for me? First thing I'll ask my brother is, why? What did you do? What are the charges? That's what I would ask. And if my brother told me he's being charged with nine felony counts of sexual assault on minors, there's no way I'm going to court to testify on his character. I think the charges already says enough about his character. I'm not going to court to help a pedophile get bail so he can now come out of jail and victimize even more people. I'm not going to do that. So Jason, his brother, he went to court and said that Marvin was a good man, even after seeing all the charges. Now, some of you might be thinking, those are just charges and um, he wasn't convicted of anything. But let me tell you something. The cops don't go around just picking people off the street, charging them with nine felony counts of sexual assaults on minors. They don't do that. If someone's being charged with that, it means they got some good evidence on that person. Use some common sense. People don't just get arrested and charged with so many counts of felonies for no reason. His ex-girlfriend also came to testify of his good character. This woman, she has no sense to come to testify on her ex-boyfriend. Your ex-boyfriend call you and says, I'm being charged with nine felony counts of sexual assault. Why are you going to testify to help him get off? You're letting a man out of jail who could now assault even more women. And his son, I'll have to give a pass because I don't know what age his son is. And I'm sure his son is probably a young man. He doesn't know anything. So I'll give him a pass. But the person I cannot give a pass and the worst one in this is his wife, Sanara. She goes into the court to testify that this is a good man. She's married to Marvin. And she should have known that this guy was a predator. He's been molesting people's kids since 2013. She married him in 2019. And during the marriage, he has continued to molest other people's kids until he was arrested in 2022. She knew something was up. She knew this man was no good. And if she didn't know, after he got arrested, they would have told her what he's being charged with. And after she hears his nine felony counts against minors, do you think she would have wake up and said, I'm not going to deal with this man? Knowing that she has two minor female kids under her care. So when Marvin called her from jail and told her he's been charged with nine felony counts of sexual assaults on minors, she should have just contacted a lawyer and got a divorce immediately. This is not a man you want to be with. Whether you have minor kids or not, you don't want to be with a man of that low moral character. And ladies, listen to this. Never put a man in front of your kids. Always put your kids first. Some women already know that and some of them don't. And if you're a man and you're listening to this podcast, the same thing applies. Never put a woman in front of your kids. Your kids should be the most important thing in your life. You should be living your life to look out for them and protect them and provide for them. You shouldn't be putting them in harm's way because you're obsessed with a woman or you're obsessed with a man. Don't do it. Doesn't matter if you're married or you're single. Never put somebody else before your kids. And I was talking about this in my last podcast. Let me tell you something. If someone is doing wrong, you need to speak out against it. And if you can't speak out against it, do not help that person. It doesn't matter if it's your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, or your kids. If someone is doing something wrong, you need to stand up and tell them, listen, stop doing what you're doing. Change your ways. If that person want to continue with whatever they're doing, you need to separate yourself from them. Because people like that is dangerous. As you can see with this case, this guy ended up killing everybody. When someone has a low moral character, low moral character means that person is capable of doing anything, including 
murder. You cannot trust someone like that. Even if she didn't have minor kids, you cannot trust someone who can be a pedophile. So Sarah goes to, to court and testifies, this man is so great, his bail should be reduced. And so the judge foolishly reduces the bail. Now, in defense of the judge, the judge is just following the law. The lawyer has to bring the case and the judge has to follow the law. And the law says that you can't hold people on bail just because. You must have a valid reason. And the reason is, is he a danger to society? And the lawyer said he's not a danger because he's under house arrest. He also said um, they took away his passport so he can't run, he can't flee from, from the cops. He also was required to have an ankle monitor. The problem is, how did this guy get a gun? Nobody said, let me search the house, the apartment. Where did he get a gun from? If he's under house arrest, I'm assuming this guy had a gun all this time. His wife had to know he had a gun because he couldn't go anywhere to get a, a gun. So it means he had to have it over the years. The wife had to know. Sinara had to know. Let me tell you something, ladies. Listen to this. If a man has an illegal gun, run. I'm telling you, nine out of ten times he's going to use that gun on you. People who are obsessed with guns, that's all well and fine. But don't have them in your life. How are you going to sleep good at night knowing someone could lose their temper and just pull a gun and just kill you? So Marvin got his bail reduced from 100000 to 10000 And he was able to come up with the money, I'm sure with the help of his wife, to pay the bail. And he got out and he's under house arrest, meaning he can't go anywhere but stay in the house. So his lawyer said that he's the breadwinner. And that's one of the reasons he should be let out of jail. I don't understand. How can you be a breadwinner when you're under house arrest? And I've, I've read so many articles about this case and nobody mentioned what this guy does for a living. So I don't know, how is he bringing in income? I have no idea. So we know that Sonara was a hairdresser and that's how she made a living. Marvin is under house arrest and he's living in his Las Vegas apartment. His wife, she was living somewhere else and got evicted. When she got evicted, she decides to take her two underage female kids to live with an accused pedophile who was facing nine felony counts of sexual assaults against minors. So she decided it was a good idea to take her minor 14 year old female child and six year old female child to live with a pedophile. Now I understand she probably was in a tough spot because if you're getting evicted, now you have no way to live. If this lady was in the worst way, she could have gone to a female shelter. Now I'm, I'm watching this case in the aftermath and I'm seeing so many people saying she was such a good woman and this and a great mother and all this other stuff. And I'm wondering to myself, where were those people when she needed somewhere to stay? Where was her mother? Why couldn't she take the kids to stay with her mother? Why couldn't she take the kids to stay with her sister or any other family member? And if she didn't want to stay, she could have leave the kids for their own safety with a family member. But she decides to take her minor kids and put them in harm's way by a man of very low moral character. And this man turns around and kills everybody. So Marvin knew he was guilty. As I said, you don't get charged nine felony counts of sexual assault for no reason. That doesn't happen. Marvin knew when that case went to court, he was going to go to jail for a very long time. And he decided that instead of standing up and facing the consequence of his actions, he decided he was going to kill his 34-year-old wife, his 14-year-old stepdaughter, his 11-year-old stepson, and his 6-year-old biological daughter. This guy's a madman, a monster. Doesn't get any worse than this. Now, his 11-year-old stepson survived. And Marvin wanted to make sure everybody was dead. So he shot everyone in the back of the head. I could only imagine the pain, the anguish, the kids and Sonara was going through knowing that this guy was just going around the house and shooting everybody to death. I'm, I just try to picture it in my head and I'm like, oh my goodness. A six-year-old child, an 11-year-old boy and a 14-year-old girl crying, begging for their lives. And he's going around just killing people in that house. And understand this, these kids were his kids. He's married to their mother. These kids did nothing to him. They're the victims. He's not a victim. He's the monster. And he decides that their life should end. It's the most selfish act I've seen in a long time. What gave him the right to take the lives of precious kids like that? What gave him the right? Why are people like this even on earth? It, it hurts me. When I see cases like this, 
It really hurts me. This is the only time I get angry in my life. When I see cases of people being killed and victimized, especially minors. You know, Sonara, she made her own bed. She decided to stay with a man who is a pedophile, low moral character. She wanted to help him get out of jail. She made her bed. I'm not saying she deserved to be killed because nobody deserved to be killed. But what I'm saying is that she put herself in that situation. And this is not somebody who's not sure. You know, someone you're with someone and you're not sure if they if they're bad or if they're good. No, this guy, she knew. With all those charges, she knew. And she still went there. I'm so mad at Sonara for putting herself in that situation. Marvin was in jail for two months. She had two months to decide to get away from this guy. And instead, she went and dig a deeper hole for herself by helping him get bail. She failed as a mother. She failed those kids. She failed them, I'm telling you. A mother and a father should be protecting their kids. You should give your life for your kids. You brought them into the world, you should give your life to protect them. You shouldn't put them in harm's way. What she did was wrong. It hurts me, it really hurts me bad. Now, 11 year old Derek, he's not gonna be the same for the rest of his life. He got shot in the head, he's not gonna be the same. His life is gonna be hell. He's alive, but it's not gonna be any good life. I can only hope that you know, maybe he's not as bad as I'm thinking. You know, maybe maybe he could have a, a normal life. I'm, I'm doubting it, but I'm, I'm hoping. But those two precious, precious girls, they're gone. And let me tell you something, okay? If you're a woman and you're listening to this podcast, you with a man, and that man is exhibiting a low moral character. You need to find your way out of that relationship. You need to get away. Because somebody like that can kill you. They can hurt your kids. So Marvin was restricted from being around children below the age of 18. And Sonara took her 14 year old and a six year old to live with him. If the cops say this man is dangerous and a pedophile and we're charging him with nine felonies, who are you gonna believe? The cops or the, the man that you're married to? I'm believing the cops. Let me tell you something. When you get married and you make vows to your spouse about that to us part and um, going to love them forever and highs and the lows and all that. You know there's a contingency. If that person decides to be a rapist, an abuser, a molester, whatever, you don't have to stay in that relationship. Because when you're making those vows to that person, you're making it to that person knowing that they're going to be a good person and they're going to be good to you and you're going to be good to them. Not that they're going to turn into a monster. If they turn into a monster, you don't have to live by any vows. Get a divorce and get out. Because that person was lying to you. That person wasn't showing you their real self. Don't stay with someone just because you made vows to them in a wedding. I made vows to my wife. And if I find out my, my wife is, uh, I don't know, a murderer or whatever, I'm not staying. I'm gone. Because you know what's going to happen? I'm going to be next. I need to worry about myself and my kids and my future. You got to know when to give up on a relationship. Know when it's time to run. Let me play the 911 call of Marvin's brother, Jason. Yeah, I'll go. I need the police out of I don't know who it is to come. You need know, police or medical? I need mean, medical. I, I hear one of the, the kids, they're breathing. They're trying to breathe. I saw uh, my nephews, his nephews. They, I, think they're, I think they're gone. And then he was in the bed with his wife, and they're deceased as well. One of the children's gasping. They look okay. like they've all been shot in the back of the head. The two adults are dead in the bed. Okay. And do they have gunshot wounds too? Fire medical service. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Marvin's brother, Jason, is culpable. Anyone that went to testify to get this guy out of jail is culpable. I hope the lessons that you can take from this case is that do not cuddle criminals. Do not defend them. Don't go and testify on their behalf. Don't help them lower their bail. Don't help them pay for bail. Don't do it. Because that person might hurt you, but they're going to hurt somebody else. And that's going to be on you. Marvin's brother Jason is going to have to live the rest of his life thinking about what he did or what he didn't do. His little nieces and nephews, he walked in that door and saw them. And those pictures will never leave his mind because he knows he could have stopped that. He could have refused to testify. He could have told his brother, enough is enough. Don't call me to testify because you're a piece of you know what. Instead, oh, he's my brother. Let me go and testify for him. Wake up. People like Marvin Patterson is the worst kind. If ever in your life you're around someone like that, let me tell you something. We need to stand up for what is right. Jason didn't stand up for what is right. 
Marvin, ex-girlfriend, she didn't stand up for what's right. She didn't care if that guy came out and molested or killed someone. And his wife, Sonara, she didn't care. She had two underage girl kids and still went to help Marvin come out of jail. That's it for this case. Thank you everyone for watching and I appreciate all the comments. I answer each and every comment. If you know someone that's in Sonara's position, please offer them help some way to stay. Because Sonara got evicted and the only place she taught to go was to live with a pedophile. She had to have more options. If you look at the funeral, hundreds and hundreds of people at the funeral. You're telling me she couldn't get help from any of those people? When you die, everybody shows up. When you're alive and you need help, there's nobody. What you know should have did? She should have contacted people and asked for help. And if that didn't work, she should have gone to a woman's shelter until she could have built herself back up. She was a hairdresser, so she had means of making money. The mistakes that she made were extensive, and it cost her her life. And worst, it cost the lives of her underage kids. I want to say thanks to everyone who watched this video and who support the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.